A lot of people seem to think that Amazon FBA is an easy way to get rich and that they can put in minimal effort and reap all of the rewards, but that's anything from the truth. It takes a good amount of time, effort, and money like any business, and you're probably gonna fail at least once. But today, we're gonna go over most of the mistakes that beginners make when they're getting started and what the best ways are that you can avoid them and set yourself up for success. Now, the first reason that most people's products fail, and it's always one of the main points that I teach, no matter what marketplace you're going into, but it's lack of visual differentiation. Now, a lot of people spend a good amount of time doing product research and finding niches and then they find these niches that might be a bit more competitive or there's already people there who are well established and they think hey like I can go in there with my pattern or my slightly different product because I'm in love with the pattern and I think it's cool and I showed a couple of my friends and my family members and because they want me to like them they told me that it looks really cool and that it's a winner and to go for it. Does that sound familiar? So when dealing with business but especially when launching a product for Amazon FBA, I always think you have to deal with numbers and not with emotions. Using some sort of survey site, there's ones like Google surveys or I've used PicFu in the past, allows you to test your product, test your idea. I'd put up product photos and then you put them against your competitors, against other ones, and then you pay an amount and PicFu sends traffic, the target audience that you want to your survey. They're gonna look at it And if you don't have people pick your product as the one they would buy like 80% of the time, then you probably need to work on your differentiation a bit more, right? And I find that this is a really good way to get in early, test your product idea before you go in and spend hundreds of dollars on samples, thousands of dollars on inventory and getting your listing set up. It allows you to have that data that's gonna tell you whether or not it's a winner or it's gonna flop and it's not relying on your emotions or whether or not you are in love with the design. The second biggest reason that I see beginners fail is because they're not optimizing correctly. Now, this is for if you've differentiated really well, and when I say optimizing, I mean everything you're doing on your listing in order to get someone to buy. Now, I break this down into a couple areas, but the first area that people aren't optimizing is their keywords. Now, this is one of the many looked over areas as it's just people simply throw in a couple keywords or do a little bit of research on it. But actually, one of my very first products that I launched, I had a little bit of a good differentiation with it and I launched and I did really bad work on the keywords and it was wasn't selling and I couldn't figure out why for the longest time and I had a little bit of stock in my supplier and I ended up having to get rid of it like getting it destroyed and later on down the track I did more deep dives on the keywords because I was launching other products and I learned a bit more and then suddenly the product started selling like twice as much and it would have been a winner and I could have kept that stock and sold it and made more money but I just didn't know at the time that I had all these under optimized keywords that I wasn't taking advantage of and in a lot of cases and especially marketplaces like Amazon Australia, a lot of your competition aren't capitalizing on the keywords. I talk about it a lot. So when you go to launch, make sure you spend a good amount of time making sure your keywords are as optimized as they can be for when you get started because a lot of the time it's going to give you a huge kickstart to jump up above your competitors right from the get-go. And the second area that I see people not optimizing on is their photos. Now, I talk about how important photos photos are all the time and how it's like Tinder, that if people see your image and if they don't like it straight away, they're not even going to click in and they're definitely not going to buy. And I see so, so many people taking their own photos. Like, just think about it. You're opening a store in the busiest retail strip in the world, right? With some of the biggest brands selling on there and you're there with your iPhone photos. Unless you are a specific e-commerce product photographer, please, please hire someone to take your photos. It's gonna make a world of difference and you'll never be able to have a successful business if you're doing that part of it yourself. 
So it's about having good images and being creative in your images. Like with Tinder, it's all about that hero shot. I talk and I've shown examples several times of people getting creative and like using bright colors or maybe using their packaging in the background, like having the box in the photo so that even though it's not so much about the product itself, when people are scrolling through, that different cardboard box draws their eye and it is pulling them to click on the listing. And then sort of tying into this is the third under-optimized area, which is your EBC or your enhanced brand content. Now, most people either one, don't have it, or two, it's done so, so horribly. Now, your EBC or your enhanced brand content is done when you are brand registered. So you've um, trademarked your name and created the copyright. So then you can have your brand brand registered and that gives you access to EBC videos, your extra ad advertising stuff. It's just extra stuff that's going to allow you to have a step up on people who don't. And your EBC is one of the biggest factors for increasing conversions on your listing. Now, you might think that it's not that important, but when you start to increase those conversions, Amazon sees that you're selling more, so they're going to send you more traffic. If you think about if you owned an electronic store, right, and you had someone come in and they wanted to buy a TV and you had five salespeople standing there all waiting for a customer, you're going to send the customer to the salesperson who's most likely to close close them and get them to buy the TV, right? So if you have a product that's selling and getting people to buy, Amazon's going to send you more and more traffic because they want to send traffic to the products that people are going to buy because it makes them more money. So taking the time, spending that little bit of extra money to get your brand trademarked, hire someone to do you up some really nice EBC, use the images you've already had done to get tied into it and it's going to increase those conversions which is going to boost your sales hugely and allow you to soar above those competitors. And then the last area that is and optimize well is your copywriting. So you have your images, your EBC, and then people generally then go to your copywriting and like your bullets and your description if you have that there as well. And the biggest mistake people make with it is not thinking about their avatar, right? A lot of people launch these products without even creating an avatar, thinking about the customer that they're selling to, how old are they, what gender are they, how much money do they like to spend, are they sort of like eco-friendly or are they more bougie? Do they like to post lots on Instagram or are they sort of more withdrawn and not on social medias? All these things make a difference in the language that people want to read when they're wanting to buy. So again, take that little bit of extra time. When you've placed your order and you're waiting for it to arrive, you have a heap of time to sit there and make sure your listing is really fleshed out. Sit down, create your avatar and think about the things that they're going to want to see when they're buying the product and then you want to optimize your listing to best suit them. So after not optimizing correctly, the third main area that I see people have a cause of failure is paying too much on sourcing and then pricing too high at the beginning. So when people are dealing with suppliers, I see so often that they're spending their money on the wrong things. They'll be out here spending like $10 on a box for the packaging, right? And it's like a eco-friendly dryer bag and it's sitting in a $10 box and it gets to that customer and you know they're not even gonna keep the box, they're gonna tear it open and then put it into recycling. That $10 you spent is gone instantly, right? Again, we need to think about the avatar Are they buying it because it's an iPhone and they want the nice box and the unpackaging experience and they're going to hang on to the box? Or is it a tradesman who's buying a hammer that they need to then use that day so they're going to rip it out, chuck the packaging away straight away so it's just got to protect it and get it there in one piece and then that's about it. And then getting the best price on your product, especially at the start, is all around the relationship that you build with your supplier. So of course you don't want to rip them off and your first order is always going to be your most expensive one. But if you're getting in there and you're building that relationship, showing the trust both ways, when you come around for that second, for that third, for that fourth order, you're going to be able to ask for better, better prices, negotiate better and better conditions. And that's going to allow you to create those really healthy profit margins. And then for pricing too high, too early, I see so many people, you know, they come into this Amazon world. There's over 350 million 
other products on there and you're the newest guy on the block you've got no reviews nobody knows who you are and you're pricing up there above everyone else right like you're this new guy you've got to go in and it takes time I always think you should price aggressively. You want to get in, get as many sales as possible. It's okay if you're not profitable on your first order. Like I always say, it's fan fantastic. It's one of the best possible situations if you can break even on your first order because you want to be in there. You want to be getting as many sales as possible. So again, Amazon sees that you're one of the best salespeople. So they want to send you more and more traffic. And you know, more traffic, more sales means more reviews. So you look like one of the big dogs and then you can start to slowly put your price up over time, right? So you see how these combine. You can slowly put your price up over time as you get better reviews. So you've got more people coming. You've now got a better connection with your supplier. So your cost is lower but your sales is higher, your margins are higher. So as time goes on, those profit margins just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the final but most important area that I see that causes people and especially beginners to fail is the lack of constant action. You know, I talk to some of my friends who sell on Amazon or a couple of my students from time to time. And, you know, they say like, man, like, Lockie, I've I've been at this for like six months now. And, you know, I just feel like I'm not getting anywhere. And so I'll say to them like, oh, okay. Well, so when was the last time that you were at it, right? Was it like yesterday? And they'll be like, oh, no, like it was last week. And I'll be like, okay, well then when you were at it last week, how long were you at it for? And they were like, oh, well, like I was at it for maybe like 30 minutes. I went on that Zon Guru tool and I had a look around at a couple of the sales spies. And I'm like, okay, before that, when was the last time that you were at it? And they're like, oh, it might have been another two weeks before then. And so suddenly I find out, you know, these people are doing a little bit every two or three weeks and that's why they feel like they're stuck and it's because you've just been sitting around and not actually doing any hard work. I have one of my good friends, Brendan, who sells on Amazon and he works a full-time job and it's a big corporate job, but he sets aside an hour every single day that he gets to work on his Amazon business and he's now launched a successful brand in Amazon Australia. It's not even the biggest marketplace, it's one of the smaller, faster growing ones. But because he sets aside that time every single day for an hour, but he takes constant refined action. And that's what leads to needle moving change in your life. So sit down on a Sunday night right before your week starts and plan out. You need to write it down how much time you're going to spend on how many days and at what time. So then when it comes to it, you've got it blocked out and you can hold yourself accountable and you know, hey, I need to spend time on Amazon right now because I want to make this work and I want to make big change. If you want to achieve something that you've never had, you need to do something that you've never done. So definitely write down any of these points or any of the features that I've spoken about that you've thought, hey, I really need to focus on that. Do it straight away. Don't let it sit around. Take that constant action and start holding yourself accountable. What can you do to avoid some of these mistakes so that your next launch, your next product is gonna kickstart off soar above your competitors and get closer and closer to that life that you dream of. And remember, you're only one product away from that life that you dream of. If you find you're really struggling with any of these areas or anything else that I spoke about, come along to my Sunday product talks. I go live on Sunday for about an hour where I help you with any questions that you have or any product ideas, we can go through them together. But thank you guys so much for watching. I always appreciate it so much. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.